Greetings, space engineers. This is Captain Rick Havoc with the Terran Republic Navy, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I am coming to you today from the primary space station of the Terran Republic shipyard to bring you an update of some of the things I've been working on here at the Terran Republic shipyard. Basically, I've been uh, implementing two new mods into my game. And uh, it's had to do uh, several things to uh, set it all up. Uh, the two mods I'm talking about, uh, one I've been planning to add uh, pretty much from the start of things, from when I started playing the game or first found out about it, and this other one is a recent discovery that I decided I just had to add to my stations and ships. And uh, that is uh, these deuterium fusion reactors. Let me try. Um, each one uh, is cranking out 30 gigawatts power. And you can hear the deuterium processor uh, processing ice into deuterium. So this station now gets its primary power from ice. And uh, unfortunately in uh, Space Station 2 over there, it was only enough room to put one of these. inside the station in in place of the uh, standard keen uh, fission reactor now let me turn my lights off this just one of the th reasons I really love this mod is this just so way just way cooler effects mm. It's especially, uh, you know, it's especially nice in the dark out here. You really see these uh, reactors glowing and the reaction just kind of flowing around on the inside. It is so cool. But anyway, turn the lights back on. Because I got something else to show you out here, and that's the other uh, change I've been implementing. The one that's uh, kind of been in the works from the get-go. I just finally got around to setting it all up. And I have uh, also decided to implement the Daily Need Survival Kit in my survival mode game. We're not in that one. My Right now, we're in one of my... Uh, creative mode saves but uh, added a greenhouse onto the station and inside this greenhouse we have the full daily needs survival kit food production setup we've got the uh, open hydroponics cage um, produces the algae we've got a food resequencer we've got a water recycler and uh, I've got a total of uh, eight food you know crop growing trays each, uh, so each one growing, uh, you know, one of the four uh, crops that, I, that can be grown with this uh, mod. And so I've got basically two trays of each one. Two trays of carrots, two trays of potatoes, two trays of cucumbers, and two, two trays of tomatoes. And... I'm debating, one of the things I'm debating is the utility of actually putting another one of these down on the planet, on my ground base, because I'm not really 
sure it's really necessary and I spend so little time down there that I really wouldn't get much use out of it, I don't think. I can grow all the food I need right up here in this greenhouse. It's on my space station. Let's see. Show you what we got, cha. Oh yeah. Basically, a uh, large supply here in here of uh, fertilizer and water. Water packets. Let's see. Yes. Things are way down on the menu. Here we go. Crop growing trays, and we got the. Uh, see, yeah, we got 24 tomatoes, 24 potatoes, 24 cucumbers, 24 uh, carrots in one tray, in one set of trays, and uh, the other trays got 20 of each of our vegetables. So, plenty of stuff to make the uh, food with. And like I said, I'm just not sure of the utility of putting another one of these down at my ground base. I kind of don't think it would be all that useful. And so, uh, but wait, there's still more to show you over here. I had to, uh, change my, uh, support ships and exchange, basically exchange two for one. I had two support ships to support this station and, uh, from the ground base and I've combined them into a single ship. So combine the functions of both in, in a single ship. Basically because I'm using the, uh, you know, using ice to fuel my uh, stations fuel the reactors as well as all the uh, H2O2 generators to uh, crank out uh, hydrogen and oxygen as needed I had to have a ship that could bring up from the from my uh, ice mine on the planet large amounts of ice and this is the ship I've got for that and uh, This is where the fun comes in for my viewers because I haven't given this ship a name. Right now it's just Salvage Freighter. And uh, I think it needs a name. All my other ships have names. And, uh, but I can't decide on a name. There's so many names to choose from. Even, if, even when I restrict myself to the list uh, on, in, in Wikipedia of all the ships that uh, were commissioned by the U.S. Navy for World War II, I've got a list, a far longer list of names than I will ever use. So the contest is that uh, I am going to throw the choice of name of this ship open to my viewers to choose 
from that particular list of names a name for the ship. And another little uh, tradition I'm going to revive with this uh, contest is the old Marvel tradition of the no prize. Since I don't really have any prize to offer to the winner of this contest, other than basically mentioning their name in, an, in a future video, that's the, that's the prize. That's the no prize. You'll get your name mentioned. So, have a look at that long list of names of support ships that the U.S. Navy commissioned to support its operations in World War II and pick a name and whole number off that list that uh, you think you think would be appropriate for this ship. Um, let me show you around so you get a better idea of what the ship is and what it can do. It can do more than just haul a bunch of, bunch of ice up here. And it's also set up as a salvage ship. And it's got a hangar bay. Grind pit and a crane arm to basically pick up salvage and, and put it in the grind pit. And basically, what I'm pretty much decided I'm going to do here with this ship, I haven't done it yet, is I'm going to find a good uh, good little welder ship in the in the workshop and uh, put that in the hangar bay in the ship load it up with components and so it can be a repair ship and I have I'll have my salvage and repair ship here This is the uh, control station. The only one there is. Also, it's the only pressurized area of the ship. Nothing else is pressurized. Well, we got back here. We got a little uh, observation area. Where you can Got, you know, got a couple of uh, programmable blocks back here in our building repair uh, status panel. And you can look down into the hangar bay from up here. We got some other uh, information screens. control panel right here we got can vent let the air out of the bridge or repressurize I can uh, start or stop my reactors my backup power generators and my O2 generators also uses a different uh, um, door control script than uh, any of my other ships. This one has uh, the aggressive airlock script controlling its doors and not just not whips standard airlock control which is what I've got on, on all my other ships. So we got assemblers in here for the build and repair. side there's our hangar bay and like I said there's plenty of room in here to put a small welder ship in here which is what I've, what I've decided I'm gonna do
Then we got another another screen back here with a power summary. And I got to put my uh, put automatons program blocks in here with uh, the scripts for uh, auto ascent and uh, hover align. So the ship runs a number of scripts and mod and and of course it's got mods in it, build and repair among other things. But it's a decent ship, I think. And uh, in fact, I've had to I had to upgrade the thrusters on it so it could handle all the weight of the ice. Each large cargo container of ice weighs 5.71 million kilos. And this ship can this ship has six large cargo containers I can fill with ice. So do the math. It's a lot of weight. And it needed some uh, powerful thrusters to lift it. So uh, basically, they're, most of the thrusters in the belly are Mark Fives, except for the large atmospherics, which are Mark Threes, all from the uh, More Blocks mod. About all I can show you on the inside of this ship. So, done. can't see him very well from out here, but I can show you the other two uh, mods that have been installed on this ship. station connection you see I got cameras by the connectors and let's see so on this side of the ship what we have in place of the keen vanilla jump drive we have an S7 frame shift drive that uh, one of the reasons I, I, I like that I like that mod is you only need one. If the ship has more than one jump drive in it, you can remove the extra jump drive or drives, depending on how many you actually have, and replace them with uh, other things. And since the uh, one of the, one of the cool things about the uh, deuterium uh, fusion mod is that the reactor is exactly the same size and shape as a jump drive. So in place of the jump drive, this uh, ship was equipped with in its uh, vanilla state. I've substituted a 30 gigawatt. Fusion reactor and a uh, deuterium processor out here to process the deuterium for it. And we got the uh, connector over here with a camera. Uh, let's see. I uh, put a since I'm going to, since I needed to uh, be able to dock this thing down on the landing platform on my station down on the planet. I equipped it with uh, retractable landing gear, one of the very newest mods in the in the workshop, and uh, pretty good one too. And I have uh, put the belly connector on a piston, so I can basically land on the platform right over the connector in the platform, which I use this the camera here for. <coughs> 
and uh, land, lock down my landing gear, and then just lower the piston with the connector to connect with the connector in the landing pad. pretty well set this pretty pretty well equipped this ship for uh for its purpose purposes i should say it's actually a multi capable ship hmm oh my somehow my gatling cannons are missing there's supposed to be gatling cannons here I'm debating now whether I want to just put the vanilla gats or maybe either maybe some uh, Vulcans or Atlas up here instead. I mean, I don't need the ship heavily armed. I don't. It's not intended for combat, but it needs to be able to fend off at least uh, small grade attackers. So. At the very least, I want a couple of gats up here, but I might want something better than gats. And Vulcans are better than gats for uh, general purpose, I think. And uh, Atlas are better than 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 uh, gats for uh, than standard gats for point. Atlas are just such awesome point defense weapons. Anyway, so now that's uh, that's this this ship I've shown you, and I got a couple of my uh, warships out here with uh, to show you with the uh, reactor install reactor in and the uh, daily need survival kit. Uh, production box installed in I really can't bring more than a couple of my ships at a time in to a save because it just slows it slows things down too much to bring more and this is another ship let me since since we're out on the outside here let me show you this is another ship I have equipped with retractable landing gear since it is a ship intended for for planetary landing and I, if you've uh, seen my review of the ship you know I've got a tank destroyer in here that uh, can be deployed on a planet or a moon but that's not what I'm here to show you today you've already seen I've already shown you that in another video what I'm here to show you today is the where I put the daily need survival kit, blocks, and the reactor. Okay, here we go. There we go. You get both a uh, visual and an and audio cue in this ship when you can uh, safely open your uh, inner airlock door or your outer airlock door if you're going out. You get both the sound of the door and you get a, either a red or blue light. So here's where I set up the uh, food production in this ship. Here's the hydroponics cube and it's resequencer and the water recycler and the um, cargo container to work with it all. And 
see, I've got dispensers, I believe, let's see, should be one up here. And maybe I may not have put a dispenser up here yet in the three quarters. I really ought to. Change the, uh, basically change this for a dispenser. Although there is a dispenser in CIC. I do have a dispenser in CIC, so, uh, the uh, products of the um, Daily Need Survival Kit can be distributed via the dispenser to anyone in the ship. They just have to come up here to CIC and get it. But still, I ought to have a dispenser in the crew quarters. Where is our dispenser here? Oh, actually, I think I just walked right by it. Yep, there it is. And here's our uh, dispenser here, and it's uh, has a good selection. We got the space meal bar, artificial food, luxury meal, drinking water, and the seeds for all the and of course. Klein Cola and Cosmic Coffee and Toffee Hot Chocolate. So the daily needs of the crew aboard this ship are well taken care of. I just need to get a dispenser back there so that the uh, any crew aboard this ship can uh, just get it back there in the crew quarters and not have to uh, come up here to CIC. Right now, the ship of this, the crew of the ship is one, so it's not exactly a high priority. So, and uh, of course, back here where the in the reactor room is where I put through. Oh, going the wrong way, Dad, come on. around showing you the dispenser. Of course, the logical place for me to have uh, put the reactor is in the reactor room. Don't wait for the red light to turn green. There we go. Thing here. So the way the ship is set up makes sense since uh, the uh, middle section of the ship can potentially be open to space. It makes sense to have the uh, door locks or to have the, the doors on either side of it be actual airlocks that you have to have that you can only open one at a time. And so here's our uh, 30 gigawatt reactor back here in this ship. Can't really see the effects as well in here because of the light. But you get the idea. We are powered by 30 gigawatts of fusion power. So that's what I've changed in this ship. Don't think I don't think I changed these things before I reviewed it, but maybe I did. Maybe I'm showing you something you've already seen in the review of this ship. Oh well. Say la vie. If, I, if so, say la vie. <coughs> and so I mentioned another I had a couple of ships 
show you changes in, so let's head on over to the other ship. Let's see, which way do I want to go here? I think it's this way. I go on, go this way. All right. Get through this basically as quickly as possible. why I've only got two ships to show you. So I've got my battle cruiser over here. TRSS Constitution. wondering, I think I mentioned in the review for this ship, it's basically named for a ship to be that never was. The uh, Navy had been planning when they uh, decided to build battle cruisers. Um, one of the ships of that uh, series is going to be named Constitution. And, but because of the London Naval Treaty, the ships, the, the ships of the Lexington, Lexington class were never built as battle cruisers. And the only two hulls that uh, had actually been completed or complete enough to uh, you know, to continue building something with them, once the London Naval Treaty was uh, was ratified, were the Lexington, the Saratoga, and the Lexington, and they, those were converted into uh, carriers. And the other ships of the Lexington battle cruiser class never came to be, and for some reason they did not transfer those names to ships uh, to carriers of the a Essex class, for instance. And name one of the Essex carriers Constitution. That would have been appropriate as well. But in any case, that's you know na naval history that could have been but never was. Now, now one of the interesting little things about this uh, update, upgrade uh, as caused. Um, it's quieted down now, but when I first loaded up one of the large cargo containers in this ship full of ice, it started making all kinds of noise. I get, and it seems like it was from the all the uh, H2O2 generators and everything loading up with ice. It's quiet now though. But, let's see. I decided on this ship to just uh, put the uh, blocks with the Daily Needs Survival Kit right here in place of the uh, cryopods that were here. Got all four, you know, the four necessary blocks for it right here. Recycler, resequencer, hydroponics uh, bay, and uh, cargo container. And right here in the uh, 
crew lounge area, we have we also have our dispenser, which has all of the uh, needs to supply the crew. Here again, where the uh, vanilla reactor used to be, instead of being right here in front of the door where you can't get through the door, I'm stuck a early airlock, and we have back here our 30 gigawatt. Uh, deuterium uh, fusion reactor and our deuterium uh, processor. It's very busily cranking out deuterium with, with ice. And we also have our uh, probably never ever to ever be necessary to be used backup uh, generators We've also got all these small nuclear reactors in back. I'd say the, the power systems of this ship are well taken care of, well supplied. You know, you never can say never when it comes to, uh, you know, your emergency equipment. You never know when you might get hit by an emergency and need to you. I mean, I might run out of ice in this ship someday. I'd be real really careless to let that happen it would be really careless of me to allow this allow any of my ships to run out of ice considering the uh, ice mine I have down on the planet and that I now have a ship that can transport that ice up here to uh, replenish my ships with as well as my stations so like I said, it would be really careless of me to ever run out of ice in any of my ships or stations. So that's uh, the changes that have been made in the uh, in my survival world on in Terran Republic in in the Terran Republic shipyard. I will be showing you the changes in the other ships as I uh, use them for uh, making future videos. So with that, I want to take this opportunity to remind you that if you are enjoying this content and would like to see more of it, please remember those buttons down below, the like and the subscribe and the notification bell. and. Uh, Please remember to leave me a comment or two down below. Let me know what you think of this uh, upgrades I'm implementing in my ships and stations. Oh, dad gummit. One other thing to show you. I almost forgot. Good thing I just remembered. And that's the reason. Um, I mean, I really ought to take you into this control station of this station as well to show you how much shield power I have there on that shield but I think it will suffice to show you this because this video is definitely running long Oh, 
shield controller cable. Look at my hit points on my shield. I have without just you know without fortifying its shield strength. 67 million 363,930 hit points on my shield. And when I fortify my shield, I've got just shy of 130,000 million hit points. And that's why every ship in the Terran Republic Navy is getting a 30 gigawatt deuter deuterium fusion reactor in it. So my ships will all have an insane amount of hit points on the shields. Shields on the station are just as are even more powerful than the than the uh, shields on the ships. For one thing, they've got two 30 gigawatt uh, reactors to to provide them with power, but they're they're she, they're station shields, and so they're they're more powerful anyway. And so that's pretty much uh, all the changes that uh, I, want, I need to show you right now. And if you are enjoying this content, please remember those, but those buttons I mentioned and uh, leave a comment or two. Let me know what you think of uh, the changes to my ships and stations in the Terran Republic uh, shipyard and uh, Navy. So what and with all that i want to wish you all a good day <laughs>